Hi, um, I'm Ben Byford. I made a game called Full Color Tiles. It's out on Google Play, um, Apple App Store. It's also out um, for the Kindle Fire on the Amazon Store. And um, you can also find it on itch.io. Um, so I'm making this video because this is my first game. And what I wanted to do with my very first published indie game is to learn as much as I could. So. Um, this video is all about um, making a very, very simple game, um, why, uh, how, and what happened when I published it, and all those things. Um, so to kick us off, um, here's a little bit about me. Um, so I am a web designer. I've been doing web design for nine years now. Um, I do UI, UX, and uh, front-end builds, uh, templating, and such. Uh, I usually use process wire, uh, CMS, check that out. Um, this is my website. Um, I also run the Machine Ethics podcast. So we talk about um, difficult, difficult ethical dilemmas with interesting people, um, such as Joanna Bryson and um, people like uh, Nick Reed, Callum Chase, all sorts of different people. So check that out on iTunes and uh, Stitcher. Okay, so why did I make this game in the first place? So I really wanted to do make a computer game. I realized that after um, nine years of working as a web designer, I built up enough kind of design and um, web skills to be able to start getting to grips with making something. Um, and I wanted to make something small and there's lots of really great videos on YouTube, uh, Extra Credits is one of them. Um, where they talk through some of the aspects of making games and give you some tips. And uh, one of the biggest tips uh, which appears in their videos, but also lots of other videos, is making an MVP, or, um, which comes from the Lean Startup book uh, from um, uh, that guy. Um, and the, an MVP is a minimal viable product, viable product. So make something really, really small. And for, for your first game, um, and for my first game, it was really about learning um, about making a game and learning as much as I could about publishing and the whole process so that I could go into my next game having um, learned a lot and being able to mitigate some of the pitfalls that I might have um, had trouble with in my first game and making something better and bigger. Um, so check out those videos. Uh, I chose Unity um, because lots of people are using Unity and I wanted to learn more about it. I previously used it for a, a couple of web, um, um, not web, um, games projects I did before for clients. Um, so very, very small little projects I did before starting on my first personal game. Um, and though I wasn't really harnessing Unity's 3D um, toolkit in this game I produced because it's predominantly a UI kind of 2D based game. Um, Unity was able to give me lots of other stuff like analytics and um, cross compiling um, which just made things a lot easier so um, although I didn't really leverage much of the app um, the asset store. They also have a lot of stuff on the asset store, um, but I'm kind of turned off about that stuff, unless it's code stuff. Um, but I digress. Um, so I started making something, um, and straight away I wanted to make the simplest thing. So what's the simplest thing? Um, it's actually kind of a match-free game. So this is my first prototype of um, an idea about having a grid and having objects on the grid and when you click on them is somewhat like a match free game and I just kind of riffed on that for a little bit and see to see what I could do and this is my very first prototype um, so you can see that if you've played uh, full color tiles then you can see that also almost um, the all the gameplay is in there already um, so at this point, I was kind of had an idea that if you clicked on one, something else changed, and it had a rule to change that, and you kind of had to work out what the rule was. And I prototyped it here in this really simplistic way um, in Unity, just to work out whether this was fun or not. You know, is it going to be interesting for anyone? 
Um, and at this point, I started showing it to people and making the decision that I liked it enough to carry on working on it. Um, and other people, you know, reacted in a more or less positive way. Um, so what did I do after that? Um, I started using Trello and Clear, um, so like a listing um, app and Trello, which is kind of like, you know, you can make it a task managing app. Um, so a really easy and simple way and free way to make notes and basically track what I was doing in my progress. Um, so things might be, I have a list of things that I would like to do or would like to implement in the game. Um, here's the progress so far. Here's what's done. Uh, maybe a bugs column. That's quite useful. Um, and I kind of prototyped and and did that in lots of iterations, um, and ended up with my first, um, and and ended up with a game which kind of looks like this. Um, in the end, which is similar but somewhat different. Um, and as you can see, it's it's not gone too far from this initial position, um, but it's still a very, very simple game. It still has those kind of uh, simple rules, and I fleshed it out into something um, bigger and better. Um, so along the way, I kind of had to make decisions about um, level design. And one of my favorite ways of making a level in this particular game was because um, I'm not telling the user much, there's no real tutorial in this game. You kind of click play and then you get thrown into your first level straight away and you have to kind of work it out, which some people have trouble to, um, doing. Um, but I did a lot of testing um, on people in cinemas. I would just sit next to someone and, and show them my um, mobile and go would you like to play this game before the, the film starts that'd be really useful um, or in cafes or such just wherever I could uh, pick people's brains about um, how they felt the game was at the time and this really honed um, the kind of introduction to um, the hardness of the game and, and how intuitive it was to pick up and play super useful um, show it to as many people as possible um, as you can that's my biggest advice to anyone um, but as I was making levels, one of my favorite ways to make a level is kind of making a level, um, you look at it and it's it's intuitive straight away. And there's lots of levels in Full Color Tile where you can basically look at it and even without thinking you can kind of click on it and um, this is a level that exemplifies that. As you kind of click around this square in the middle, it's already showing you the solution but because of the other levels aren't all like that, it almost tricks you into not um, taking the easy solution out. Um, this next level um, isn't like that, so you can't just click on these two um, and make it work, unfortunately. Um, but essentially, uh, there's lots of levels where you can look at it and intuitively win, which I really find satisfying about the level design and also about um, playing the game as well. Um, one of the other things I did was I made a level generator. So this is a level generator I made in Node. Um, so all this did is, if you're familiar with Unity, so Unity is in um, mostly C Sharp, um, the scripting language that it uses. Uh, I wrote this quick level generator in Node um, because I'm quite familiar with JavaScript from my web stuff. And um, what this did is most of the levels are handcrafted. Um, but at a certain point, I kind of um, didn't have any more ideas for levels. So I started making this level generator in hope that it would just make me hundreds of levels and that would be really cool, interesting levels. So I basically made a grid because the whole game is on a grid. Um, and each level would be a new grid. And they would have uh, one to nine representing the different objects that could be in the game. Um, and what I found with this level generator, though it worked, it made very uninteresting um, asymmetric levels. So they weren't beautiful and they didn't, um, they weren't very satisfying. Um, so instead of spending a lot of time making the level generator uh, make better levels, 
what I did is I used the level generator and generated um, over 200 levels and I basically just loaded them in um, as a text file they looked a bit like this uh, straight into unity and I played through them all I went no this one's not good no this one's not good oh this one's interesting and I would note down um, the shape of the level the coordinates of the level what the level was doing um, and I created maybe 10 or 15 levels that way by taking what I like the look of from those generated levels and then handcrafting them myself. So it's kind of like an inspirational thing rather than a thing that I inserted into the game. Um, so the game mostly is handcrafted. Um, yes, so there's lots of things um, as I was making this game, it actually took me um, a year and a half to make it from its entirety, its inception to um, being published. It got published this year, 2018, in uh, the end of February. And um, one of those things that they didn't tell you <laughs> is really annoying. There's lots of things um, that is great to talk to other web um, web uh, games developers about uh, about making a game. And one of those great things is this stupid thing, um, which I found out uh, in Unity when I was demonstrating my game to a game dev um, in the office. And he was like, "Oh, that's, yeah, it's interesting, but it looks a bit uh, a little bit shonky. Like the animation's a bit shonky." And I was like, kind of taken aback by this because I thought the animations were great. You know, I spent some time on them. La la la. Um, but what it was actually referring to is the refresh rate um, was quite slow and it looked quite sluggish um, and I had, um, I mean the game had been running like that always so I hadn't really noticed and this bit of code simply added, so he, he um, had previously had this problem before and added this bit of code to my um, main, so just once within my application um, increase basically it's turning the application to run at 60 frames you can increase this to 90 frames if you're doing something like VR or um, a really high refresh rate screen on a PC for example um, I think 60 was uh, by far good enough for me uh, I think I decreased it to 50 actually on the actual build uh, for mobile so it didn't completely kill your um, battery life um, and vsync count zero, so that's to do with the refresh rate of screens. After we added this, it looks so good. It was so silky smooth, and it was so frustrating that this stuff isn't like apparent or like in Unity. Oh, just before you publish this, are you sure you want to check these settings? Um, something like that. Um, so there's some things that you just don't, you won't find out unless you um, ask people who've done this sort of stuff before or have some experience in making your first game. Um, so use that, check that out, um, save you loads of time, it's great. Um, okay, cool. So um, I had a friend who produced the audio and music for the game because the aesthetic is very simple. Um, so I did that all myself and I asked for a bit of help from my girlfriend with the coloration. Um, so that's all her, um, Tori Taylor, um, ToriTaylor.com, check her out. Um, but the, the audio and the music was by a guy called uh, Jack Fletcher, who's a friend of mine who lives in Bristol. Um, he has a YouTube uh, channel called Batteries, Beats and the Great Outdoors, where he plays around with the many synthesizers he has, Game Boys, all sorts, and takes inspiration by walks in the countryside or um, sitting on the beach, having a nice time and making some interesting music kind of in response to that and he um, produced the music and the sound design for full color tiles um, so check him out um, fantastic um, stuff and he is available for hire um, so at this point I generated low levels I spent a lot of time um, testing with people um, getting feedback making those first 10 levels Kind of ramp up in a way that was meaningful and you didn't get too confused and hopefully you understood by the end of that what the game was doing which would then help you with um, the rest of the levels and at the end i made uh, 60 levels for the first build um, and then it started getting to the time where um, i needed to, to do qa 
Um, so I did quality assurance um, with a guy called Carl, um, Carl Aldred, um, who was a professional um, QA guy, which was super useful. Um, so I did that and he and looked at my game across lots of different devices and produced me a bugs list. And then I was able to take that bugs list away and, and start um, making the game better. Um, I also did a bit of testing myself um, and build, um, built the game using Unity for lots of different platforms just to see how it would run um, and making sure that it was good enough across all these platforms. I think Android's still a bit dicey at the moment. Um, I think the back button doesn't work, but it's one of those things on my bug list that I need to sort out um, before my first um, um, downloadable. Um, so, after that, I wanted to learn as much from the game as possible. So what does that mean? I needed to add analytics. Um, Unity has their own analytics. There's lots of companies that um, you can Google which do games analytics and you can add their plug into your game and then see their um, stats in their web dashboard. Um, as I said, Unity has their own. Check it out, it's really simple to use. Um, I find the active users uh, a bit quite confusing and this is actually live data. So um, yeah, I mean, show, show your eyes. So, um, but I mean, this indicates that um, at the beginning people started using it um, people are still using it most days, and I'm still getting users most days, um, but not very many, usually like one or two. So this is not ideal, um, but I, did, I didn't really have any aspirations for this game to have millions and millions of users and make loads of money. It's actually free, so it doesn't make loads of money, obviously, um, but it was designed to be free, so it's more of a portfolio piece um, it was about learning as much as I possibly could from the process um, and then having a game which I published and took through in its entirety to demonstrate uh, to clients and to other people who, uh, you know, for Kickstarter campaigns and stuff like that, that I could produce a game, I've created one, I've learned all these different things and I know how to make games now. Um, so that was the plan. Um, so the analytics were really useful. They've actually introduced a new set of um, standard um, custom events which are useful. Um, things like um, tutorial ended, tutorial started, um, game ended, game started, um, add, pop up, all these sorts of things which um, you can add yourself in custom events uh, but they've just given you a handful of things that you probably would want to use basically. So check those out. Um, standard custom events I think they're called. Um, so we have analytics and I am tracking and I'm also tracking on the um, App Store, there's the iOS Store and the Android Store as well to see how many downloads we get. Um, both of those dashboards are quite uh, different in different ways and um, so it, it's useful to have the Unity dashboard as kind of the overarching one. This is what's actually going on and if you want to dig into the iOS uh, category then you can use their dashboard for example. Um, okay, so this is an example of the menu screen running in Unity. Uh, one of the biggest questions I had was how much is enough? And it's one of those more philosophical uh, questions and there's really no good answer to this. It's a free game, so um, that doesn't necessarily... I, I feel like if it's free, it doesn't have to be as um, expansive maybe as a paid game. Um, I got to 60 levels because I felt like it was a nice round number. There's four sections of 15 levels and each section introduced a new kind of element. So I like the um, uh, symmetry in those numbers. Um, so if I'm going to produce any more levels I'd probably um, make more levels in packs of 60 so that you have that um, expectation set basically carrying on um, but it was one of those things where I chatted to people I got them to play it and um, there's really no answer to how much game you need to actually add to your game um, I, I would say that lots of testing can help you out here but also um, don't make it too hard 
<laughs> uh, if, if people can't get through the first 10 levels, then there's an issue there. And I really tried to hone it so that, you know, they felt like they were progressing, basically. I've played a few games recently where it, they're so hard um, within the first few levels that it's actually quite um, problematic and quite distracting to keep going. So I'm about to release the game and when you release a game you have to do all this other stuff which is really annoying because you feel like as a games designer, especially as an indie games um, developer, you, you want to make games and that's your primary focus and then you realise that people have to play the game and what's worse is that they have to find out about the game. So there's all these other things that you have to do. Um, so what I did with my game is I created a website for a start. Um, so I created games.tmc.design. Um, so that houses all the games I make under that name, uh, which currently is one. Um, so check it out. Um, it has all the information about full color tiles, where you can download it from um, some videos and screenshots and all that sort of stuff. Um, there's a thing called Press Kit, uh, which is um, by the guys. Um, who made who uh, the indie guys Flambia, um, which is really good. Uh, so check out Press Kit. Um, it just gives you a kind of framework, um, a website builder, just to make yourself um, a website which is easily digestible by the press. Um, so it gives you all the fields and the information that you should be filling out. Um, as I was a web designer, I boshed together this uh, website which kind of uses some of the same ideas of press kit but isn't press kit. Um, it's it's um, based on um, Process Y again. Um, so I did that. Um, I created um, screenshots, very important screenshots um, of the game for the iOS store and the Android store um, at different resolutions. Um, they'll tell you more about that when you go to um, produce them. And um, producing videos is very important as well. Uh, so gameplay videos and the correct resolutions um, for iPad and iOS um, and iPhone and different things like that. Um, I actually only produced one video, um, a portrait video for um, the most um, used resolutions for iOS and Android and then I didn't do a landscape one for iPad so it's something that I probably will do eventually but it's kind of somewhat a duplication of work there so I had to produce portrait one and a landscape one and I couldn't just hash them I couldn't just export them together and make the same two different videos I had to kind of redo the video so there's a lot of work, extra work there, and I thought that the most important, my most important users were going to be these um, uh, normal phone uh, portrait users, which is why I concentrated most of my marketing efforts on on those people. Um, so there's lots that you can do there, um, and you can get really clever with how you make those videos. And um, what I did was basically um, plugged my iPhone into my Mac, uh, got up QuickTime. Um, and started the screen record and it's recording the screen for the the device. I started playing through it um, I played through as much as I wanted to demonstrate in the video and then using Adobe Premiere um, there's other uh, editing software you can use obviously um, I then cut it down to it has to be for iOS specifically it has to be between 15 and 30 seconds long um, and I was mainly gameplay with a bed of audio, and then I added some very, very simple titles over the top. Um, and yeah, actually, they have on iOS, um, they have a um, policy against doing much other than gameplay within those videos. So you can put titles, but you can't really go crazy and do loads of visuals and stuff that doesn't actually appear in the game. Um, so be aware of that because um, they might turn you down. Um, strangely, uh, I was able to get published within um, a day, 12 hours, I think. So I, I submitted um, the game, I made an archive, um, sorry, I, I created a build on Unity, created an archive on Xcode and on Android Studio, and then I pushed up to um, iTunes Connect, um, filled in all the information, and then press go and said this is ready for a submission now I want to publish it and I did that I think at 11 at night and then the very next morning at uh, maybe 9 I checked 
it was already published and live on the App Store. So um, the what I've been told before is sometimes it takes up to two weeks to get published. So that's a huge, um, like, that was a very, very quick turnaround. Um, and I was kind of taken off guard a little bit. But it was awesome because um, I was going to go to an ex, a games expo that um, the very next day afterwards. So this was the Thursday morning and I was going to an expo on the Friday, which is great because it meant that I could demonstrate the game, but I also could say it's available, you know, go and download it now, which was really, really useful for while I was at the expo. And the expo happened to be um, Geek. Um, so this is uh, some kids playing the game at Geek. Um, you can see I've got a big TV there. Um, so at Geek Festival, um, they have a indie area. Uh, this is a festival in Margate, um, big games festival, expo. And so I took the game and I had um, a booth here with lots of different games developers um, who were also really cool, interesting. And about half of the games were published and half of them were kind of in development still. Um, mine was only just published the day before. Uh, I took a big TV with it running on my laptop. I took an iPad and I also took lots of um, cards so that people could take away um, a card with the name of the game and how to buy or how to download on them. Um, and it was, it was super useful because it meant that I had about 50 different people through the day, maybe 50 kids and about 12 adults playing the game for the day. And I could really I get a lot of feedback straight away from people playing. And I think in hindsight, I would like to do this earlier on in development. Um, so lots, like I said, some of the other indie developers were um, testing the game at these sorts of expos and they were near um, the end of the development, but they were still polishing and, and getting feedback from users. And this was uh, perfect for that because you get lots of people who are interested in playing a game and you can get instant feedback and watching them play is really useful as well. Um, so that was great. Um, and yeah, so this is the game on the Play Store. Um, it was also available for iOS as well. Um, and what I'm going to be doing now is um, trying to push the game more, so more marketing activities. Um, I've started looking at some new prototypes for new games um, to keep those juices flowing and inspiration going and getting excited about something new because I've been doing this for a year and a half now so um, in my you know spare time um, and hopefully the next release will be a more commercial release so I can start making money um, and also working on other client based games projects. Um, I've done a playthrough so we'll, we'll look at the other videos for a playthrough. Spoilers, um, it will have most of the solutions to all the levels so if you don't want to know the solutions don't check that out. Um, if you want to learn anything else about um, how I create the game or what I did during that development process, give me some feedback um, in the, the comments below. Um, and I'm looking to do some DLC. Um, so part of my learning process here is to say, well, um, I don't know how to develop DLC yet. Um, so let's do that. And uh, what I'm going to do hopefully is um, make another level pack and make that downloadable for um, a small cost so that I can see how uh, people react to this downloadable content, will people pay for it, um, and just learn about that process. So I may make another video about uh, how I got on with that. Um, but for now, thank you very much for watching and go check out the game. Here we go. Thank you very much.